Puss in Boots by Charles Perrault. A miller left all of his possessions, a mill, a donkey and a cat, to his three sons. It did not take long to divide the property. No attorney was called in, since the fees would have eaten up the little patrimony. The eldest son received the meal, the second son the donkey, and the youngest received only the cat. The youngest son was very sad at receiving so little. My brothers, he said, will be able to earn an honest living with their meal or the donkey. But when I have eaten my cat and made a scar of his fur, I will die of hunger. The cat had heard this speech, and though his had not appeared to do so, and said to him with a calm and serious air, Do not be troubled, master. If you give me a bag and a pair of boots made for me, in which I can go among the wishes, you will see that you were not left as badly off as you believe. His master did not place with much reliance on the cat's word. However, he had seen the cat play cunning tricks to cats, rats, and mice. When he would hang himself up by the hills or hide in the floor, pretending to be dead. So the master was not altogether without hope of vain health of, of his problems by the cat. The cat received what he had asked for and boldly pulled on his boots. Then, hanging his back around his neck, he started off for a warren where there were a great number of rabbits. He put some bran and herbs in his bag and then stretched himself out as if he were dead. Now he just waited until some young rabbit, little birds in the whites of war, came and poked his way into the bag in order to eat what was inside it. He had hardly laid in himself down before he had the pleasure of saying a young scar brain of a rabbit get into the bag. The cat pulled the strings and caught the rabbit without mercy. Proud of his prey, he went to take the palace and asked to speak to the king. He was ushered upstairs and into the state apartment. The cat bowed low to the king and said, Sire, here is a wild rabbit, which my lord, the Marquis of Carabas, which was the title he had the seed to make up for his master, has ordered me to present with his compliments to your majesty. Tell your master, replied the king, that I thank him and am pleased with his gift. Another day he went and hid himself in the wheat, keeping the moat of his back open as before. Soon he saw that a brace of partridge had run inside and he pulled the strings capturing boots. He immediately went and presented them to the king as he had the rabbits.